Good evening and welcome to Tucker Carlson. Tonight we often accuse politicians of dishonesty on this show, but there are grades of it. Let's boil it down. Nothing the Democratic Party advocates for is more dishonest than gun control. Everything about that one specific issue is false. Most policy debates actually aren't like that, and we try to be honest about it on the show. No matter how passionate you are about a position that you have, you can still sort of see what the other side is talking about. You might, for example, deeply dislike taxes, but you can still acknowledge it is fair to charge people for the services they receive from the government. So their side isn't crazy, they just arrived at a different number than you did. Or you can hate abortion, and we do, and you can still understand, if again, if you're being totally honest about it, why a scared pregnant teenager might be tempted to have one. But gun control is not like that. Gun control is entirely fraudulent. The Democratic Party claims that guns cause violence. That's the core claim, and it is a lie. It is provably untrue. The places in this country that have the most guns and the loosest controls on those guns also have the least gun violence, the fewest killings. That's the bottom line. You could look it up. It's publicly available to anyone. Anyone who tries to restrict your legally owned firearms is not trying to make America safer. The point is to disarm you to strip you of your autonomy, your power, your right of self-defense. Gun control is not about guns. Gun control is about who controls America. Is it the population, as in a democracy? Or does all control go to a small group of authoritarians, as in an oligarchy? Those are the stakes in the gun control debate. It's not about guns. It's about who runs the country. So with that in mind, Joe Biden's speech today calling for more gun control should make you uncomfortable. Almost nothing Biden said was true. We could go down the list, but here are a few highlights to give you the flavor. Biden claimed that firearms purchased at gun shows are exempt from background checks. That's a lie, as anyone who's ever been to a gun show can tell you. Joe Biden claimed that gun manufacturers have total immunity against lawsuits. That's also a lie. Gun manufacturers get sued all the time. Ask them, etc. So it was a speech aimed to mislead rather than to inform. Before he announced how he plans to restrict your Second Amendment rights, Joe Biden wanted to remind you that those rights are not real in the first place. They are not, as he put it, absolute. Nothing I'm about to recommend in any way impinges on the Second Amendment. There are phony arguments suggesting that these are Second Amendment rights at stake for what we're talking about. But no amendment no amendment to the Constitution is absolute. You heard the sirens in the background responding to the skyrocketing crime rate in the city he presides over. But the right to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. That's the promise in the U.S. Constitution. But according to Joe Biden, it's still not an absolute right, despite what the text says. No, that right is subject to his approval and his interpretation. Joe Biden is in charge of the Constitution now. Joe Biden defines its terms. And Joe Biden has decided that something called stabilizing braces can no longer be allowed. Now, a stabilizing brace is used by target shooters to hold heavy firearms. They play zero role in the murder epidemic now underway in our cities. Then why is Joe Biden banning them without the approval of Congress? Probably because up to 40 million law-abiding Americans own this device. And under this order, Joe Biden's order, every one of those people will have to alert federal authorities and pay hundreds of dollars in fines for the crime of owning a harmless piece of plastic that was legal yesterday. And if they don't comply, Joe Biden's federal authorities can then drag them off in handcuffs, seize their property, and charge them with a felony. So with a single stroke of a pen, Joe Biden just turned tens of millions of overwhelmingly Republican voters into criminals. Is it starting to make sense now? Think about that for a minute, and you'll begin to understand why the Democratic Party is so focused on what they call weapons of war. You might know them as semi-automatic, small-caliber sporting rifles that normal people use for hunting and target shooting and home defense. Here's the thing that you should know, and again, don't take our word for it, look it up. No subject is more carefully cataloged than gun violence. Guns like this, these so-called weapons of war, play no meaningful role in crime. Virtually all gun murders in this country are committed with handguns. A small number of people, again, provable, a small number of people are responsible for most of the violence and they use a small variety of weapons to commit it. Those weapons are not rifles. Here are the numbers. 
According to the most recent data from the FBI, firearms were involved in a total of 10,258 homicides in 2019, the last year for which data are available. Fewer than 500 out of more than 10,000 of those homicides were committed with rifles, rifles of all kinds, including so-called weapons of war. So criminals don't use rifles. They're not concealable. Maybe that's why. In fact, more people were murdered with knives than with rifles. So if you actually cared about making the country safer, keeping people from getting murdered, you would target handguns in big cities. That's where the murders are. That's where the violence is. But the Biden administration is doing the opposite of this, the mirror image of this. The Biden administration is letting big city criminals go. People who use guns for violence are walking out of jail. And instead, the Biden administration is using, and you saw it today, the full force of government to disarm peaceful voters in zip codes that voted for Donald Trump. It is that simple. Today, Biden announced that he wants to ban what he calls assault weapons. He's speaking about the AR-15 which is the single most popular sporting rifle in America. So the question is, if we banned so-called assault weapons, would the country become safer? That's the only question that matters. And we don't need to guess about the answer because we've tried this before. Under Bill Clinton, for 10 full years, we banned assault rifles. And then by law, the Department of Justice studied the effects. So we know the effect. And you again can look it up if you want. It didn't work. In fact, once that ban expired in 2004, gun homicides fell in almost every major city. So policies like this one are unhinged from reality, to put it gently. So to enforce them, Joe Biden has nominated a man who is unhinged from reality. His name is David Chipman, and he will now run the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms, an agency that Joe Biden referred to today as the AFT. Today, I'm proud to nominate David Chipman to serve as a director of the AFT. David knows AFT well. <laughs> David knows AFT well. Hilarious. If you're Joe Biden, everything is a teacher's union. The AFT is a teacher's union. So who is David Chipman? Well, he's a conspiracy nut, for one thing. In a recent internet post on Reddit, he claimed that the Branch Davidian shot down helicopters during the Waco siege in 1993. No, they didn't. No one aboard a federal helicopter was shot or injured that day. The helicopters didn't crash. That is a bizarre claim to make from someone who is directly involved in the case, as David Chipman was. But it's worse than that. In 1993, the ATF killed dozens of innocent children and at least one pregnant woman for no obvious reason. It's one of the worst things that federal agents have ever done in this country. So if you're taking over the ATF, maybe you could apologize for that. But no. David Chipman lied about it and then attacked the dead. It was like blaming the Japanese for their own internment or attacking the victims of the Tuskegee experiment for getting syphilis. It was not evidence of a generous spirit. It was evidence of a zealot. This is the man Joe Biden just nominated to lead ATF. But it gets worse than that. In a Reddit post, David Chipman suggested that people who fail background checks should be arrested on the spot. Quote, while at ATF, I conducted studies involving people who failed background checks to determine how many later committed crimes with a gun. Many did. This is a perfect opportunity to arrest people before committing crimes rather than responding after the fact. Arrest people before they commit crimes. That is a brand new concept in American law, though the Chinese are highly familiar with it. But the suggestion does raise a point of pressing interest to the Biden family. Joe Biden just appointed a guy who thinks people who lie on federal firearms background checks should go to prison. Oh, well, do you know any? Hunter Biden purchased a handgun illegally. He lied on a federal background check. That's not speculation. He did. We've seen the form. So the question is, will David Chipman arrest the president's son? And if he doesn't arrest the president's son, the question is, how exactly are you obligated to follow these rules? That's a serious question. Can you live in a country where the rules don't apply to the president's son, but you could go to jail for violating them? How can you participate in a system like that? Again, sincere question. They should explain.